Welcome to Under the Wayne Helmet. I'm Kyle Simmons, and I'm joined by our former Michigan and NFL offensive lineman Thomas Grinds and the host of the ASAP Elite Podcast. Pop in. This week's episode is sponsored by Jabs Gym. Learn the fundamentals of boxing through high intensity cardio and strength workouts with locations in Metro Detroit, the Eastern Market, Ferndale, and Birmingham. We'd also like to thank our other sponsor, Juke. You can purchase their football-inspired gear at jukefootball.com. Last Saturday, the Wolverines defeated UNLV 35-7 at the Big House. J.J. McCarthy completed 22-25 passes for 280 yards and two touchdowns. Rye receiver Roman Wilson had four catches for 89 yards and two touchdowns, and Blake Crum had 80 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Thomas, how do you feel about the performance against UNLV? And also, have you seen an improvement from game one to game two? Basically, what we're seeing right now is a very, in my opinion, a very vanilla um, yet balanced uh, piece of work by the Michigan Wolverines. What's starting to come about just within some of the scuttlebutt that I'm, I'm kind of hearing some of the rumblings. Why isn't Michigan rushing the ball like we did last year? But at the end of the day, I go back and tell people the teams that we're playing, even though they they may not be you know top caliber teams, these kids are on scholarships as well. But their coaches watch film as well, and they know that the us running the ball is going to be our bread and butter. So you know they're stacking the box, making it very difficult for us to actually get a, a run game going. But what's in my opinion, um, pretty exciting is our ability to be balanced. Okay, you want to stack the box, we're going to take the top off. Uh, J.J. has come in, done a fantastic job over the last two games. One of the biggest things that I'm really looking um, at J.J. is his ability to put the ball where it needs to be, but he's also taking care of the ball. We had no turnovers last week, so that was huge. As long as we continue to win the turnover battle, continue to play balanced football, and what I mean by that, just taking what the defense gives us, yes, you know, that's, that's going to be kind of our thing, our ethos, our character, if you will, is that we want to run the ball, play smash mouth, play bully ball. But if that's not available to us, then in years past, we would have just kept pounding our head against against that brick wall, trying to make something happen that wasn't there. But this year, I feel like we're definitely making those on-the-field on adjustments. And again, if the run's not there, hey, let's, let's dial up something long with uh, Roman Wilson and, and the rest of the wide receiving core and J.J. doing what he's doing with the ball, why would we not um, start to engage our passing game? So the numbers may not be as gaudy as they once were, but at the end of the day, we're winning games and we're playing balanced football and we're not turning the ball. And Thomas said about us being balanced is true. We were almost balanced, uh, almost 50% across the board. 27 pass attempts and 30 rushing attempts. It's not bad. So I would like to think that that's more uh, calculated. You know, we took the uh, we took our, our foot off the pedal, kind of, because we wanted to stay around that 30-30 mark. You know, when they cut it easily, just ran the ball probably, uh, you know, 40 times and throw on 15 or vice versa. You know, they wanted to – it looked like we got a real good, you know, of a uh, of, uh, balance – from all facets of the game, you know, and uh, they look brother. One thing I'm con- concerned about is uh, Donovan, Donovan Edwards, you know, like six attempts for like eight yards or something like that. You know, even if he uh is only getting a few, you would expect him to at least, you know, average four to five yards per carry, you know. So let's see how that transpires, especially down the season when Blake start, starts to get up, uh, banged up a little bit. That's it. So I do want to talk about JJ a bit here. Right now, he's 48 of 55 for 558 yards and five touchdowns through his first two games. Um, Thomas, how impressed are you with his play so far? I'm not impressed. JJ's meeting the expectation. Right. Um, you know, everybody's put lofty goals and expectations on this young man. I feel like he's done it himself. And what we're seeing right now is the, the, the coming of fruition of the work that he's put on in the offseason. Like I said, I'm no quarterback guru, but I've been around the game long enough. But when you take last year J.J.'s mechanics and compare it to this year mechanics overall, you are seeing right now J.J. is dialing it in, putting the ball where 
our receivers are able to actually catch the ball, not having to do a whole bunch of athletic uh, gymnastics to catch the ball, but actually catch the ball on the run and actually do something after the catch. So I think that goes back to the amount of work um, that J.J. and the coaches have put in and his craft, his skill set during the offseason. So am I impressed? No. Is he meeting the expectation? Yes. Is there still room for improvement? Most definitely. But again, he's taking care of the football and not doing silly things where he's trying to force it. So again, that goes along as far as his maturation process as a quarterback. J.J. is still very dynamic, still very athletic, but I think he's he's settling in more with being a pocket quarterback, a pocket passer, yet still knowing he has the ability to go do J.J.-esque sort of things. And I think that bodes well for the Michigan Wolverines because these are going to now be the things that are going to keep defensive coordinators up at night. Are we going to get running J.J.? Are we going to get passing J.J.? Hopefully we're going to, we'll get both. And the times in which J.J. is going to be running, it's going to be a design run, you know, which tells me that the offensive line is doing their thing where he has time to sit back, set up, go through his progressions, and deliver strikes. People forget that he can tote that thing. You remember for the first two seasons, you know, we were talking about uh, him, uh, you know, running that read option, you know, uh, and talking about the chicken ball and, uh, you know, throwing him around last season. And now – He's ranking amongst the top five NFL prospects. You know, the Shadors, the Caleb Williams, the Bo Nix. Everybody's around that uh, 96, 95 mark. You know, it's a percentile mark. So, yeah, he's doing his thing. And, uh, yeah, if uh, if it was an anomaly, I think we'll be talking about it more. But the fact is, there's some, there's some guys out there slinging it, man. So, it's about consistency and see if we can keep that up, especially when we uh, get deeper into the season. So, this Saturday... The number two ranked Michigan Wolverines host Bowling Green for an evening kickoff at the Big House. The Falcons are one and one coming off a win last week versus Eastern Illinois. The Wolverines are 40 point, 40 and a half point favorites. I'm sorry. So, uh, Thomas, we're going to ask you, um, what are you expecting to see out of the Wolverines as we go into this last tune up game before we start the Big Ten conference schedule? More of the same. The big thing right now is let's get out of these quote-unquote, preseason games healthy. Let's get the reps. Let's work on whatever it is that we need to work on as a team in all facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams. But most importantly, let's get through these, you know, this last game healthy. And I think once we get past this game, we may delve a little bit deeper into the playbook because it is the last preseason game. We're going to start, you know, moving forward within in the uh, Big Ten season. But again, look for balance. Look for us to, again, establish, try to establish the run. If you want to load up the box, if we're going to take the top off, let J.J. and Roman and the rest of the crew go out there and do what they do. And if you want to just try to play man up with us, we're going to be fine with that as well. But, again, what I'm looking for right now is I'm looking for week-to-week progression within our running game. And what I mean by that is I still think Blake has some, some last-year rust on him, if you will. So I think the knee is healthy, but getting him – Fully back to game day instincts. I, I think Blake's a very instinctive runner as far as his cutting ability and good use of his vision. Whereas Donovan, I want to see Donovan making better decisions. And like Rob spoke about before, make that decision, plant your foot and go. You're not a make guys miss sort of running back in the hole. You're going to plant that foot, see daylight and shift gears and, and hit the gas. So, if we start getting those things going, my offensive line is doing a pretty good job right now. I'm giving them a solid B plus A minus up until this point. I thought we did a really good job last week as far as changing the line of scrimmage. Um, we didn't do that as much as I would have liked to have in the first game, but I, I was able to tell that we're definitely charging to change the line of scrimmage. And our pass pro is, is pretty well, pretty good as well, keeping JJ clean throughout these last two games. I, I get it. Based off the level of competition that we played up until this point, we should be doing those things. But as I said before, week to week progressions. We're going to go in and play the Falcons. You're going to see more of what you already saw within the last two weeks. Balanced football. Not coming out here doing delving too deep into the playbook, but I would like to see us maybe turn a page or two. And uh, let's just get out of these first three games healthy. And Rob, what are you going to be looking for against this game against Bowling Green? 
like the big fella stand. Like the big fella stand. Same thing. Nobody is uh dictating what we do or forcing us in pressure situations to change our game or our game plan. So yeah, we're gonna come out and execute exactly what we need to show. You know, get everybody revved up. You know, get that get that lather to go into the Big Ten season and really, you know, uh, and, and Harbaugh's return, should I say? You know, and uh, I think we'll have a better pitcher that first game in the Big Ten. That's it for this week's episode of Under the Wayne Helmet. Thank you to our sponsors, Jabs Jim and Juke. Also, be sure to check out Under the Wayne Helmet merchandise at asapelite.com. Come back next week where we preview the week four matchup versus Rutgers. And be sure to listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and the Believe Podcast Network. You can also watch us on ASAPElite.com and the ASAP Elite YouTube channel. For Thomas Gwines and Rob Penn, I'm Kyle Simmons. Go Blue. Hell yeah. Hell.